manufacturing PMI came out today stronger than forecast. What do you make of the numbers? Yes, and they were quite nicely stronger. I think they came in at 51.7 versus consensus of 50.8, so that's a, a quite a, a decent beat. And it's, uh, it confirms again that I think China is going through a uh, recovery uh, phase. What we've probably seen, if you look at some of the other indicators, electricity consumption, some of the other data which comes out from companies, is that um, after the initial stimulus effect which came in in the second half of last year, that some of that is starting to wear maybe a little bit out. So we've had a little bit of soft patch of data coming through over the last two months or so, but this PMI confirms that um, that recovery, which our economists at least are talking about, um, uh, is, is firm still on, on track. So I think this, this latest set of data we had, which looked a bit soft, is really a temporary uh, uh, set of uh, soft data, and then we're going to see better numbers coming through uh, as we go deeper into 2013. Are there any policy implications, and what is your equity strategy in China? I think uh, there's a couple of things going on on the equity side uh, which are important. The, the macro side, this PMI data confirms again that it looks pretty good. What I think is even maybe more important is that we're in the middle of uh, the Chinese reporting season or the Asian reporting season. It finishes by the end of next week. Um, I think about 30 or 40 percent of all the Chinese companies have reported, so a lot of it still has to come. But so far, a lot of companies are pretty much in line with expectations. And this is the first quarter whereby the expectations of the analyst across the street are meeting the economic realities or the earnings realities of the, of the companies. Um, and I think this is important. We've had this expectation reset over the last six to nine months. Numbers had to be uh, revised downwards. That's not really happening anymore. And I think that sets us up for a Q2 whereby China is going to look increasingly attractive. Valuations have come off, uh, earnings are not being revised downwards anymore, they've actually remained stable, uh, and we might actually, if these P&I numbers inch a little bit higher again, we might see maybe late Q2 earnings upgrades again, and I think that would allow the market to, uh, to, to perform better as we go deeper into Q2. How do you advise clients' position ahead of the possible earnings upgrades that you mentioned, defensive or cyclicals? We've been somewhat defensive since uh, mid-January, actually, uh, in uh, our own strategy and also a kind of portfolio which we're running. Uh, and uh, I think we still believe that markets are in a holding pattern, but the risk to being defensive is, I think, rising. So as we go over Easter into April and May, uh, we need to reconsider a little bit again how defensive you really want to be. For, for the moment, I think it's good to remain somewhat defensive um, and, uh, and, and, and expect that these markets will continue to, um, to perform in this kind of holding pattern. I don't see any catalyst for them to really perform strongly in the, anytime soon, unless, of course, some of these results are really going to surprise us uh, next week, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, and uh, I think deeper into Q2, it's, it's really time to think about uh, that position again. We have the Fed statement and the Cyprus crisis happening outside of Asia. How do you position for such event risks? Now, I mean, some of the catalysts, of course, inside Asia, the most important thing, I think, is simply uh, earnings uh, revisions. If they're going to be revised upwards, that would be quite, uh, that would be quite key. And, but I don't, as I said, uh, that's not going to happen anytime soon. But then we have, of course, some of the issues outside of, uh, uh, outside of Asia, beyond our control, or beyond the region's control. Um, the Fed has basically said that it will continue its, uh, its asset purchasing program and our economists in the US are saying that this will probably continue well into next year. So I think that's, that's going to be on hold, uh, uh, or basically that it will continue. Uh, and of course then there is Cyprus as well, which at the moment is, is a situation which is very difficult to judge from where I sit. Um, it just adds a little bit of risk to, uh, to the Asian market. There is no direct impact on banks or anything like that for, uh, for the moment. It's really a sentiment issue. And I think if it means, for an example, in Asia that equity valuations are coming off, uh, that actually would create a, a bit of a buying opportunity.